appreciate it. Thank you. Um, thanks, Eric, and, and uh, the whole OPT gang here for putting this together on an, you know, an off year for the big AIC up north. We try to get out here to support OPT because they really are our sales force. Uh, it's myself and them. <laughs> so if you, know, if you have questions of a technical nature that they can't handle, give me a shout. If you want to buy something, these guys are uh, great at selling all of our gear. So uh, talk just a little bit about who we are and, and where we came from. Some of you probably know us and most of you probably don't. Uh, we're located in uh, Michigan, in Lowell, Michigan. We say, I like to use the tagline, uh, helping astronomers measure the stars since uh, 1979. That was the year that uh, Jerry Persia actually incorporated the company. He started it off as a little group called uh, DOAA Enterprises. Jerry's first product was a uh, instrument called a, a single channel solid state photometer, the SSP. He started it off with a two-part system that had a uh, control box and a photometer head. Uh, and eventually he grew it into the third generation, the SSP-3. Uh, believe it or not, we still sell the SSP-3. We delivered uh, three automated instruments to Eric here this last week that are bound for India. They use these as teaching devices uh, throughout uh, most of the Indian uh, higher education system. And a lot of you guys, I recognize some faces here who've had our instruments and know about them. Um, we also have the SSP-4, it's a near-infrared, uh, does the H and J bands. And the SSP-5 is our uh, PMT-based. When we were advertising in Sky and Tell way back in the uh, early 80s, uh, a guy named Dr. Bill Malm with the National Park Service came across one of our SSP ads. And he thought, you know, I can use that uh, instrument to make some quantitative measurements on a new science called visibility science, where they can actually quantify how clear, how hazy it is one day to the next. So uh, we had an instrument called a contrast trick teleradiometer that was uh, basically looking at a skyline and a uh, mountain scene. And as the contrast decreased, that meant it was getting hazier. And as the contrast increased, it was clearer. It wasn't very precise, but it was a good start. And then we ended up with a uh, transmissometer where we actually put a, a light source, a chopped light source at one side, and a receiver, an instrument, SSP instrument on the other side. And uh, we're able to very tightly quantify the visibility, like at the Grand Canyon. So the reason the Park Service cares is uh, we as citizens want to go out to the parks and, gee, it'd be nice to see across the canyon today. And the transmissometer was one of the instruments that helped us to quantify and determine, you know, what caused the pollution in the area or just the haze or whatever else. What that did is all the uh, National Park Service work was fully remote. So we would have satellite link ups and of course running off battery and that really taught us early on that we have to have remote capabilities on all our equipment. Well in the late 90s we developed the first truly digital focuser that you controlled from a computer. It had a standalone box as well but uh, the big key to it was the serial interface so that all the software guys could talk to it and then they could develop their auto-focusing routines and drive it. And the other big thing was temperature compensation. That was our big patent. Um, like uh, I think Michael said earlier, everybody kind of beats up on your patents, but hey, it's a friendly industry, so temperature compensation helps everybody in that your telescopes do, in fact, move throughout the night, as you probably know, so you really need to compensate out that change in uh, the optical uh, system there. So when Tina and I bought the company in, in 2008, uh, first thing I want to do is develop a different type of focuser that didn't have the external hand box because a lot of people don't need those. So we developed this integrated version, the TCFSI, works on all the same control command sets. And we were able to actually offer quite a bit less expensive because the control box actually was kind of expensive to machine and all that. So I say it's a lowest cost of ownership. Actually, by the time you start adding all the motors and everything on your, like a feather touch focuser or another type of focuser, this thing is still a bargain. It's about 800 bucks or so out the door ready to go. The other thing about the TCS that I like to talk about is uh, about two years ago, uh, one of our customers called and said, hey, I need a new mount, um, just a new little adapter for my new OTA. I got a new OTA. He said, it's my third one. This is third OTA, like his second mount, and I think fourth camera. He said, that TCF focuser is the only thing I got from my original rig. So the things will last. They're pretty beefy. And uh, if you haven't already, I invite you to come upstairs and heft one of them and just uh, take a good look at the build quality, because I think that's what we really do best is uh, make things to last. Uh, the newest one is the next generation focuser is our focus link system. We manufacture a uh, filter wheel and we use the original SBIG protocol, also controlled through uh, serial port. We sell a lot of these through Edmund Scientific, but again, this thing was a beast. Uh, you can hang 20 pounds on it. And there's not going to be any flexure. Part of what I wanted to talk about today was just primarily our camera field rotators. 
we've been building the Pixis line since uh, mid uh, 2000s. The original Pixis two inch field rotator you can see there fits into any uh, focuser or receiver like your eyepiece. Camera attaches on the back end through a T thread. It's primarily used for guide star acquisition. So the original SBIG cameras that had that built in uh, guide chip, if you haven't fixed, you might be in a sparse part of the sky and just not hit a guide star. So you gotta walk out there and rotate it back. Again, being interested primarily in remote operations, we set this thing up so it's all computer controlled and you can actually select a, a guide star either on the fly or, or in pre-planning and then uh, let your scope work throughout the night. So a couple other things, you know, I've got three different versions of it. The original Pixis, the Pixis 3-inch are all USB serial control, ASCOM compliant, X2 drivers for the SkyX. So the 3-inch, uh, we've just gone through a new generation. The original 2.4 inch thick Pixis 3 is available with a three inch receiver. So we have a lot of adapters to go to almost anybody's camera. Uh, we have a new one that's got a three and a half inch by 24 TPI thread. It's thinner. We were able to cut down some of the thickness and the third one is the AP 2.7 inch receiver. And uh, these are all available. Uh, the Pixis LE is our light edition. We can still handle about five pounds, but it was based on a design by a guy named Ted Agos. A good customer, he loved our stuff, but uh, he wanted to develop a rotator that didn't flex. And so what he did is he came up with this ingenious bearing system, which is fairly cost effective to make. We don't have to buy a thin section bearing like we do with the Pixis 2 and the Pixis 3. We actually build these in-house. We added our control system, it's a full USB HID driver control system. These are great for DSLRs or any other camera where you're not going to be at the scope. If you've got an off-axis guide, you're going to need to roll it to find a, uh, a guide star. Like the Pixis 2-inch and Pixis 3-inch, these can be used for derotation if you're doing alt-as work. I'm doing a lot of videos right now um, at video.opticinc.com to kind of show how to configure stuff to try and make it a little easier for you guys when you're out in the field. The other thing I do is try to uh, do remote sessions like TeamViewer. So if I have a customer that's having problems with something, Call me up, we'll get on a team viewer session and we'll uh, kind of walk through and get it all configured. So this is one of our newer lines. Uh, we actually acquired Alnatac Astro Systems back in 2011. Alnatac has a very unique flat fielding device that works quite well with all of our other products. So this one's the flip flat and we have the XL series. I'm working on a 47 by 47 for Arnie Rosner right now. And then sled in some weird stuff like uh, remote dust covers and Botnov masks, we can do Hartman masks. And we've got something called a Perseus Instrument Selector. Now this is actually an Oxford University uh, image at the lower left there. It's a four port instrument selector. We have a rotating mirror, very quick uh, changes between filters, and these are used on some scopes for gamma ray bursters so that they can quickly move from a imaging camera perhaps to a spectrograph and get a lot of data really fast. And then we developed, as part of the focus link system, this fast focus, which is a uh, secondary mirror focuser. So we locked down the primary on a Celestron, like a C11, C14, and we actually moved the secondary mirror instead. It kind of takes advantage of the fast star system. So it's pretty unique. You can see I've got a wire system there that kind of gives you the simulated uh, diffraction patterns. Most current product we are, the newest product we've got is a quick sync motors for the feather touch. This is a product where you gotta kinda, of, again, come up to the table and get a feel for what we're trying to do. We like the feather touch, we don't make it. We like the feather touch because it's such a nice, elegant design, but as soon as you put a motor on it, normally you throw away the beauty of it. So, quick sync solves that, and uh, we actually sell this through Starlight Instruments, through feather touch, as well as the handy stepper motor. And this is a, another weird project we've done. We've created a uh, polarimeter. So an amateur can do polarimetry studies by modifying a Pixis with a wave plate. And we can run it through different various angles. And uh, using a calcite crystal, we can split a star's image into uh, two images on the CCD. And we just count photons, basically. So if you need some information on any of our products or any of the technical details, contact me. If you're looking to buy something like this, contact OPT because uh, they do such a great job for us. I really do appreciate all that they've done. And thank you guys for being here. Uh, that's pretty much all I've got, so thanks.